I can say that related to releasing the order, we wanted to have a coordination. So now that the governor has released his and he's releasing the details at 1.30, uh, it would be wise for us to look at what he's proposing. Although again, as the mayor noted, we have been in talks, so there should be some similarities, uh, but understanding that when something's issued at the state level, that it, it will, we need to make sure that it is um, aligned so that there's no confusion between the municipalities as far as execution. So our plan was to move forward with an order um, today, but not activating it today, issuing the notification that it's coming out and then making it active at 12.01 a.m. on the 25th, which is Wednesday morning. So wherever the governor is issuing his, I, we don't know the timing of it yet, so, um, but that was what City of Milwaukee was looking at at this point in time. Uh, she asked how I was feeling. I said, I'm feeling very, very well. Thank you very much. Another question. Are all restaurants allowed to stay open for roadside pickup during this stay at home order? Yes, I believe that is still in there because you're looking at access to uh, basic human needs. So people need to eat. Uh, of course, grocery stores are in there. I know some grocery stores have like, hot bars and things like that, and many of them have taken additional precautions to make sure that there's um, limited uh, exposure to disease, like making sure single items are packaged and self-serve is not um, open. So again, thank you for those businesses that are taking additional precautions um, to prevent the spread of COVID-19. From Brendan at CBS 58, how will this order be enforced? Will there be penalties for not following the order? I'll take that one. Um, one of the major goals here, or not one of the major goals, without a doubt the major goal, is to change human behavior um, and to change human behavior in a way um, that is creates a safer community for all of us. We've had a lot of conversations, and this has happened throughout the nation, this we do not view as a law enforcement tool. And you can see uh, the way that we've drafted this. It's not heavy on law enforcement. And it's not heavy on law enforcement for a number of reasons. First and foremost, I believe that the way for this order to be most effective is that people self-police or they self-regulate. We're never going to have enough police officers. We're never going to have enough first responders to take care of everything. And we, and we shouldn't. But what we do have built into this, if you look, if look at our order, and other orders similar to this, is there's the general language that this is enforceable under, sec, under Chapter 252. That means that if there's a willful violation, um, that it can be enforced through our local ordinances and through our state law. Is that our first choice? Obviously not. I would say only in those situations where there's a flagrant disregard that you will see something. Now that doesn't mean we're not gonna have our police officers if they go to a place. And this is, this is part of the reason the order is here. We got reports over the weekend of people congregating around liquor stores or bars or restaurants. And that's exactly what we don't wanna see happen. Exactly what we don't wanna see happen. So, so it is certainly conceivable that our police officers, if they see that situation, are gonna ask people to move. My belief is that people will follow that. And this is part of the understanding to make sure people understand. So, so yes, there are there are provisions in there. It's a general misdemeanor to do that um, to, to violate these orders. But our first our first goal is to have people comply with it without having law enforcement involved. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mayor. The other point too is you know what is a, a law if you don't enforce it. And we know this is not normal for us. This is a very rare situation for everyone uh, across the globe right now. So moving into uh, like heavy handed uh, enforcement in the beginning is not the move. So we would be again, uh, focusing on education, increasing awareness. When we have like chronic violators, that's when we'll have different discussions. And we also have been providing updated information to people that have complaints, for instance, with operators and vendors. Um, you know, there's licenses that need to be provided to do business in the city of Milwaukee. So if you continue to violate, then your license is in jeopardy. That's where we're going with some individuals because they don't either understand the severity of it, understand the severity of it, 
but choose to uh, make a, a call that they're going to override that. That's when we move in that direction. And I want to provide you with the um, phone number and the email address for complaints, uh, which we are handling through our Consumer Environmental Health Division at the Milwaukee Health Department. Uh, we've been, received a number of uh, complaints across the board. And again, we're trying to limit uh, the need to bring the Milwaukee Police Department into um, enforce heavy handed. So uh, again, that's a last resort. We hope everyone understands the significance of this. And this is about getting back to normal and protecting lives and, and making sure people are safe. Um, there's a, a question from the Milwaukee Business Journal wondering if there's any sort of targeted end date on the order or is this indefinite? So uh, exactly. Well, that was one of the things that we also discussed. Uh, Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Executive Order 8, which is what Governor Orders issued on Friday, that targeted um, businesses and provided uh, some additional closures for our barber shops and salons and whatnot, uh, stated that the order was good until the emergency declaration ended, which would be May 11th, in my, according to my estimates. So we talked about how long our order would go, and right now we wouldn't put an end date on it yet because we need to monitor how we're suppressing COVID-19. We're still going to uh, test, you know, more testing supplies are scheduled to come in. So um, I, as far as like the criteria that we are using now, which we're only testing individuals that are in the hospital and we're testing uh, healthcare workers, those are the four uh, levels of priority right now. Again, anyone else that has symptoms, now the added symptoms are sore throat, uh, body aches, then fever, 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, um, and cough and respiratory uh, distress. People have complained of having like a heaviness in their chest, a sense of a weight being on their, on their chest. So those are the symptoms. If you have those symptoms, you're, you're most likely infected with COVID-19 and you need to isolate for 14 days. That is the guidance that is coming from the state. And that's the guidance that we're using at the local level as well. And again, in the local order, we don't, as, as the commissioner said, we don't have an end date. I don't know that anybody can realistically say when this emergency is going to end. And, and it would have been somewhat arbitrary for us to put a date in because we simply don't know. And we don't want to send a message that this is going to drag on for months and months and months. We don't want to send a message that this is going to be over in two weeks. Our preference is obviously that it's over as quickly as can be, um, but it's an emergency order. And our intent is to lift the emergency order once the emergency ends. There's a question from the Spanish Journal. The Hispanic people are concerned about paying their bills because many of them are not working. Is the city going to do something about it? Well, let me say, I know that, that, that many people in the Hispanic community have been hard. Many people in the African-American community, in the Hmong community, in the Anglo community, people have been hit hard everywhere. Everywhere people have been hot, hit hard. And I would say those at the, at, at the lower paying jobs are being hit the hardest. And so we are actively looking to see what we can do. We're working with the state, we're working with our federal representatives to see how and how quickly we can be, bring relief to those individuals who need it. Um, again, I, I know that this is a healthcare crisis. I also know that it's an economic crisis. And, and we have to be mindful that we are dealing with not one, but two crises at the same time. This is the last question uh, from, that just got taken off. Oh, here we go. Last question from Ben Jordan. Has Milwaukee requested the newly FDA approved tests that take 45 minutes to get results? If so, when could they arrive and where would they be administered? We can, I'll follow up with our lab director, Dr. Bhattacharya, to get that information. I'm not sure of those details yet, but I did see that update um, over the weekend. So at our four o'clock, we can have that information for you. And then Adrian's question was, what can you tell us about the third person who has died in terms of whether or not this was community spread case or if there were other circumstances? Um, my understanding is this individual did have underlying health conditions. Again, that's one of the risk factors for having complications or possibly um, perishing from COVID-19. 
Last question, will liquor stores be ordered to close or stay open for takeout? We, I think we need to coordinate that with the state. Uh, I know that's a big question for a lot of folks. Um, so we would follow up at four. Before we close out, I do want to say something about the, um, the election process. Uh, obviously, we are continuing to see very serious problems. Um, we're having more and more workers at our early election sites who are declining to come in. Uh, and they are making, in most cases, the prudent decision by not coming in. This has put incredible stress. Um, and in fact, my understanding was that the election commissioner did not open the early voting sites today. That is not acceptable. This underscores the crisis that this healthcare crisis has created for our electoral process. There has to be a change. There has to be a change, whether it's all mail, all mail in balloting, whether it's a new date, this issue is going to explode if we do not address this issue and address this issue fast. People are not going to be coming to the polls. We are going to have a stay at home order throughout the state of Wisconsin and in the city of Milwaukee. And to suggest that people are going to go out and vote in that circumstance, I think is simply wrong. And so I am calling on the state government and the legislators, as well as we had the conversation with the governor that I know that he takes this very, very seriously. Um, but we have to have a dramatic change to make sure that people's right to vote can be exercised in a safe way. Uh -huh.